Collins, it is not possible. But did not Mr. Collins want to marry Lizzie? Shh! Clergyman. I mean to be an officer's wife and brush his red coat every morning. I hope they are happy. Well, they may be happy. Heart finds happiness in the strangest places. Mr. Collins has been taken in by a, a hussy. Oh, the whole world knows Charlotte Lucas to be a hussy. I have been barbarously used by everyone. I'm so unhappy. To the library. Do not worry for me. I'm perfectly happy. I'm gratified to discover that Charlotte Lucas, whom I'd always thought of as tolerably sensible, is as foolish as my wife and more foolish than Elizabeth. Oh, here she comes. Lady Lucas, I knew it. She comes to congratulate herself on having a daughter well married. And to commiserate with me for having five unmarried. How can I endure it? Jane, you are my only consolation. You must be married to Mr. Bingley at once. I do not understand why you delay the matter. I do not understand anything. I hope it's over. Entirely over. He will not return and I must accept it. It is from Miss Bingley. She writes, she's increasingly convinced that an announcement will soon be made concerning her brother and Miss Georgiana Darcy. Poor Mr. Bingley. And poor Mother. What shall we tell Mother? It is from Mr. Collins. On the eleventh page, he informs me of his intention of returning in a fortnight, the better to enjoy Miss Lucas's company. And they will visit here. And I hate having visitors in the house when my health is indifferent. And lovers of all people are the most disagreeable. And Elizabeth, where is Mr. Bingley, I should like to know? Why does Mr. Bingley delay his return? Well, Mother, it is possible, I suppose, that Mr. Bingley will not return at all. at all. Well, I don't understand such a thing. He loves Jane. Heaven knows what she's going to have done to drive him away. Oh. And we'll be asked to dinner at the Lucas's, and Lady Lucas will gloat, because Mr. Collins is to be Charlotte's and not yours. And it's all your fault, Lizzie. Oh. Weeks pass, Jane waits and pines and grows thin and hopes against hope. As for Mr. Bingley, he sacrifices his own happiness to the caprice of his inclinations. Makes me angry. Dear Eliza, how your eyes sparkle in defense of a sister you love. What privilege to be loved by such as you. Jane is too good. She is an angel. I do not know what to say to her. She is hurt if I speak ill of anyone, but I must. There are few people whom I really love, and still fewer of whom I think well. The more I see of the world, the more dissatisfied I am with it. Mr. Bingley is a foolish young fellow, Eliza. If he does not return, it is no great loss to your sister. Oh, I do not attribute his conduct to design. He is thoughtless and wanting in resolution. His sisters do not want resolution. They no doubt wish him to marry a girl who has all the importance of money and great connections. That is the effect the Darcy household has on everyone. It taints whomsoever it touches. What kind of a girl is Miss Darcy? When she was a child at Pemberley, I devoted hours and hours to her amusement. But now, I wish I could call her amiable. But she is too much like her brother. And very, very proud. Poor Jane. Poor Mr. Bingley. Well, my Aunt Gardner is coming to cheer us up. She is my mother's sister-in-law and very elegant and a great favourite. And perhaps she will take Jane to stay with her in London. I hope she does not take you. <laughs> 